This is just a quick video of my Photoshop workflow in creating this image of the stained glass ceiling at the National Gallery of Victoria in Melbourne. Our first order of business is to apply a little bit of lens correction. Then adjust the highlights to get a nice balanced level, in this case about negative 50. There's not very much correction that we need to apply in terms of a black point or a white point for this image. I generally have a couple of default values for clarity, vibrance and saturation. I usually go with 50, 25 and 10. Next step is to select the correct white balance. It takes a little bit of playing around to find something that is pleasing. Now I've tried a couple of different white balances over here and I finally settle for the shade setting. Once done, I go ahead and open the image. The first correction that I normally do is straighten the image with the horizon line. I use the ruler tool for this. I typically find a line that I know is horizontal and align the ruler tool with it and allow it to straighten the image automatically. When you straighten the image, the layer is going to end up being crooked compared to the rest of the canvas. You can fix this by using the skew tool to stretch some of the corners to align with the canvas. Once you've finished applying free transformations to the image, you can go ahead and crop the image to fill the entire frame. Over here I've done so, but I've taken care to ensure that the image is centered around that central beam that's running up and down the middle of the image. I'm now ready to use a plugin to enhance this image. I'm going to use Nick Color Effects from Nick Software. Once I launch it, the first filter that I'm going to use is the Pro Contrast tool. And what this does is it allows me to adjust the dynamic range of the image. Now, in Nick software, you can set this up to where you can see a left and right before and after view. Uh, you don't necessarily have to keep it there. Generally a good idea to start off with and move it back and forth or completely remove it as you work your way through. So now that we've enhanced the dynamic range of the image, our next step is to apply a bit of polarization. Now what polarization does is that it enhances the richness of any blues in the image, which there's a fair bit of in the stained glass ceiling. So we're going to go ahead and crank it up a bit. Now the next step here is to apply a neutral density filter, but unlike a regulation neutral density filter which goes darker to lighter top to bottom, over here what we're going to do is rotate it 180 degrees so we make the lower part of the image, which is better illuminated, slightly darker, so that we draw attention to the illuminated stained glass ceiling. The last filter that we're going to apply over here is a standard sunlight filter. Now this fills the entire environment out with a nice balanced illuminated feeling and we're just going to crank down the intensity so that it doesn't overwhelm the image. Now once you're ready go ahead and hit OK and Nick Software will go ahead and apply all these plugins and it eventually creates another layer on top of the original image. So you haven't lost it all and uh, it's this new layer from which we'll continue working. Now one of the problems about shooting with a wide angle lens is that it makes walls fall in. Now, it's easy to fix using a little bit of perspective correction and it's just a matter of drawing the anchors outwards and stretching the image so all your vertical lines appear to be truly vertical. Now what this does is that it kind of shortens the image so you also want to scale the image vertically so that it doesn't appear to be squashed. Now this image is mostly about the stained glass ceiling but you've got some magnificent brick walls on either side which have got a lot of detail in them but we just need to bring them out. Now to do this we're going to have to create a mask so using the quick select tool just go ahead and create a couple of selected areas and we're going to go ahead and create a mask. Uh, it does take a little bit of time using the addition and subtraction tools and the selection tool settings but it's not that difficult. You don't need to worry about being terribly accurate because eventually we are going to end up applying a little bit of feathering and contracting the selection so that it doesn't appear to be a stark change. There's actually a graduated change between the layers. So once we've created a new layer from our selection, we're going to go ahead and apply another plugin called Nick Viviza to the, uh, to the selection. And uh, what we do in Viviza is we go ahead and we crank up the structure. Now, 
a little bit of trial and error over here, but I've gone ahead and cranked it up to 50. And you see how much more detail that you get uh, on the layer once the plugin applies the structure settings to it. And you can go ahead and turn the layers on and off to see the effect there. Now at this stage we're ready to go ahead and merge all the layers and discard any layer information and it's just a matter of finishing the image. To give it an aesthetically pleasing look it's a matter of cropping it to an aspect ratio where it looks good. Uh, I have a thing about cropping my images along the lines of the golden ratio which is 1.618 so I just go ahead and do the math and calculate what the height of the image ought to be based on its width. And once I've gone ahead and ascertained what that dimension is going to be, I just use the canvas size tool to resize the canvas and crop the image to the aspect ratio of my choice. Finally, just some finishing touches. We're going to go ahead and apply some vignetting. I'm going to use Nick Color Effects to do this and just launch the vignetting feature. I usually pop it down to somewhere around 10 or 15 percent. In this case, I've gone ahead and used 10 percent. So now let's go ahead and flatten the image and save it as a JPEG file. Now we're not entirely done. Let's close the image out and load it into a piece of software that takes the noise out of it. Now I use something called Noiseware from Imagenomics. Uh, I've got ahead and loaded the image in there. And uh, if you zoom in and take a very good look, you'll see how much noise there is in the image. Now Noiseware's got a whole bunch of presets that will allow you to take the noise out of the image and we're just going to go ahead and apply one that's most appropriate. I'm going to go ahead and use the one for Stronger Luma over here. Not Stronger Color, but Stronger Luma. And uh, that's because of the change in light levels that we've done using the color effects. So let's go ahead and apply that and once it's done you'll see how much of a difference Imagenomics Noiseware does. And at this stage you're done. Just go ahead and save the image and you're ready to go ahead and publish it.